you know, we really don't have a choice of embracing the future, you know, like, like, like that's not even really, um, um, I mean, he doesn't necessarily say we need to embrace the future, but, but, but the idea, you know, behind this film is, is are we going to go to the past and look to the past and the old ways? Or are we going to look to the future for, well, I kind of think we're so like, this is what I think about, we are. We are told evolution is this constantly ongoing process, and it's really not. Like, if you look into evolution, it's, you know, like like Darwinists have to talk about punctuated equilibrium and how it occurs in leaps and bounds, and then it reaches this stasis for a long amount of time. And, like, um, you know, we're sold that evolution is constantly happening, and that's why we need to keep buying new iPhones and new computers and new this and new that. And it's just Moore's Law is a fallacy. It's not. It's like it's just a marketing scam. It's, there's no such thing as, as technology gets, you know, a chip, holds twice as much information every 10 years like that's not a law that's just a marketing scam it's it's totally and it's not it's not it's even false like we've actually reached a um a barrier with how, how much information we can put on a chip um science has sold us like this is planned obsolescence like evolution does not work that way you you can't keep redesigning your infrastructure we can't we literally let's say global warming is true uh, I just probably got a box on my video now for saying that word because some AI is going to flag it. But let's say, just for the sake of argument, that it's true. You can't just change your, your infrastructure that you've built over the last two centuries overnight and, and to keep changing it. Like, we can't keep changing our infrastructure. We can't keep changing the way we do everything. We can't keep changing the way, you know, you, you, you do everything that you do. Um, so, so, um, and, and he also talks about this idea of greed and power and, and the extension of greed and power is war. Well, science is allied with capitalism. Like every technology that we have is dual use technology. It is, it is a military application first and foremost. Then if it happens to have some marketable thing we can put out in the public, then it's used that way, including the internet. So, so if he wants us to divorce our, like we either need to, uh, if we want to live in some utopia type future, well, we would that would require science to divorce itself from capitalism, um, and good luck with that. Um, and, and and then there's this idea of, you know, they say like uh, conservative philosophies look to the past as the golden age, um, progressive philosophies look to the future as the golden age, and it's not an either or scenario. Both are true. But there was a golden age in the past. Um, all the cultures around the world, all the indigenous tr traditions around the world talk about um, a golden age and, um, and, and a time of this blissful paradise of peace and plenty. And um, every culture around the world talks about that. But we ignore our indigenous traditions. We ignore our biblical traditions. We ignore all the written histories that we have. And then we dig up some rocks and we say, oh, it was, you know, this barbaric, battle of cavemen and suddenly civilization magically appears and that's just that's a just so story um there's no real science behind that like like the archaeological record is mute and and to use an analogy if we were to say oh let's say all written history is you know it's written by the victors and it's no good and it can't there's no truth in it so we're just going to go off the archaeological record well, let's use a, a metaphor from cinema. An archaeological record preserves a few frames of a film. So if you were to dig up a film, like well, what's preserved in the archaeological record, they say, like, you never find complete skeletons. The skeletons you do find are, are buried under anomalous circumstances. So, so there's an estimate of anywhere from uh, like the high estimate is like 10% of the archaeological record is, is represented in there of the reality of that time to to less than one percent to like a tenth of a percent um it's probably even worse than that so so you can't reconstruct a film if you only have a few frames of it um or a few segments of a film if you had a two-hour film and, and you've got two minutes worth of frames and, and fragments how are you how can you reconstruct that but we look to the archaeological record to reconstruct our past and we ignore every single indigenous tradition that talks about a golden age of the past when the gods walked the earth oh they were just myths and making it up well that's that's be that's debatable like if you read if you read about uh construction engineers that that work on huge projects that build 
like the Marta train station in Atlanta or, or sports palaces and whatnot, they'll tell you that the tolerances, the architectural tolerances in the pyramid are greater than they use when they're building, you know, modern day sports stadiums. Like the pyramids are at a higher level of accuracy than that. And, and nobody knows how they're moving 1,000 ton stones. There's not 1,000 ton stones in the pyramid. The largest stones are about 70 to 80 tons, uh, which is a massive weight, by the way. But uh, when we when we drop, you know, when we put nuclear power plants, you know, into into their cement um, fixtures, it does weigh 165 tons. But yet these ancients were somehow moving a thousand tons, which is equivalent to the the Falcon Heavy rocket uh, without the wheel. Like you're you guys are out of your mind. You, you know you have all these records of, of a golden age you have all, all this you know cultures talking about gods you you have buildings that that you know that just just to do a time study they called up the indiana limestone institute which has 33 quarries all the modern technology in the world and said okay if we just you know prepared the stone and shipped it you know, not even build a pyramid, but but how long do a time study? Because they like in, in the huge projects like that, you have to like that's where they went to build the Empire State Building. So when they needed limestone to build the Empire State Building, they went to the Indiana Limestone Institute and got the limestone for it. the amount of limestone, by the way, that's in one pyramid is 30 times what you could build 30 Empire State Buildings with that amount of stone just to give you the magnitude of, of the project. Uh, a general idea the magnitude of it but these guys said that with 33 quarries and and you know earth movers and modern equipment and diamond tip this and dynamite and, and wheels and and all the technology in the world they would have to triple their current output and instead of working eight hour days they'd have to work 24 hour days it would take them 27 years just to prepare the stone of the great pyramid not even build it and yet Egyptologists say, oh yeah, they did it in 23 years and blah, blah, blah. And it's like without the wheel and with just slave labor. Like the people don't know what they're talking about. Like there was a golden age in the past. And the problem is, is, you know, um, the problem, the reason why we don't believe that is one, it's the atheistic bias of science. You know, science can't confirm the Bible and it can't confirm the existence of the gods. So um, that's just confirmation bias there. But the thing that kind of screwed it up is is all these cultures also describe a flood. And a flood is like, like imagine, you see what a tsunami does and how a tsunami literally wipes away, um, that it scrapes cities, that, it, like the coastal areas that were hit by tsunamis, it scrapes it down to the bedrock. So, so you're not gonna find archeological remains there when, when a flood overcomes the continents. And the, the real issue, the reason why the flood was disbelieved initially is because it would take eight times all the water in the oceans and the ice caps to cover the highest mountain point peaks. Well, where's that water? Where did it come from? Where did it go? So it was automatically discounted from the beginning. Even though there's a ton of geological evidence, all the evidence for the ice age is also evidence for a flood. And nobody, no cultures talk, there's no universal story about an ice age. There's only universal stories about a flood, but we found that water. It's actually in the in the um, deep in the mantle. It's in the lower mantle and in the transition zone between the upper and lower mantle. So there's literally eight times that amount of water down in the in the planet, and it you know came out for whatever reason, and that really did wipe everything away. So all we have is like this mute evidence of a few megalithic structures and pyramids that have survived, and everything else was wiped clean. And so it's like, oh, these myths can't be true because we would see some fragments of this technology or, you know, some evidence of this civilization. We wouldn't. So, so that's why most people don't believe in an advanced civilization, a golden age in the past. Um, both are true, though. Like, we're, we're headed to a golden age at some point if we can overcome war and greed and, and the quest for power. And, uh, um, but there was also one in the past. And um, so... Anyways, uh, I guess those are, those are the three philosophical discussions we're going to have here. Um, I'm at about 40 minutes here, so that's going to be three YouTube videos for sure. But uh, I guess uh, 
I don't know if I can divide it up per subject. You know, do the first video with the first topic, the second video, the second. We'll see. Um, and I and I, I I sound like I'm possibly uh, negative. I have a pessimistic view of science or the future, and um, I am optimistic. I do think we can pull through, but I don't think um, there definitely needs to be. We need to have debates back in science. Like we don't just need debates about urban planning and debates about the future of cinema. We need debates about science because as it stands right now, you know, one one thing that happens in science, and I'll use an example of like the dis archaeologists discovering the Dead Sea Scrolls. When those we initially found these seven scrolls in this, these caves in Qumran off the off the edge of the Dead Sea, and it's like oh. You know, like Pliny and Josephus talk about the Essenes being in this area. Maybe these are Essene texts. And that became the theory when they were first discovered. After 40 years of study and, and analysis of these texts and analysis of this site um, and the discovery of hundreds and hundreds more texts, we're now at 950 texts of the Dead Sea Scrolls, um, we have stuck with the consensus opinion when we had seven scrolls and no data like like every new piece of you know so the Essenes supposedly were celibate men well the graveyard has men and women in it and children well that doesn't add up uh, it's too close Jewish law says you can't have a graveyard for kosher like like they're all, all worried about ritual purity and this graveyard is too close to the site and these people were supposedly super strict you know monastic type people and it's like well they certainly wouldn't put a graveyard there um there's 400 different hands four to five hundred different hands they like they've anal analyzed the 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 texts and usually of a group if you had like 950 scrolls you could expect anywhere from six to a dozen different scribes writing these scrolls they've got four to five hundred there's the copper scroll, which is written on this in, in almost nearly indestructible piece of copper um, that, that has the temple treasures and their locations of burial. Why would the Essenes have any information like that? How would they have all this gold? How would they have all this stuff? Um, like theologically speaking, the, the Dead Sea Scrolls, they don't even say the Shema. The Shema is like this, um, uh, this, 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 couple of verses that that, that 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 you see those little boxes those tefillin that they bind them to their hand or their forehead inside is a little s s scroll of paper that has the shima written on it they don't even have a consensus of how to write the shima among these monastic Essenes and and um, and why is it that out of the millions of Jews that were around we have none of their writings but yet this small little group of 4,000 Essenes according to Pliny and according to Josephus, they've written uh, 900, like like one out of four Essenes are writing texts. Like none of it adds up. But we're stuck with this consensus opinion and every time a new data comes that overturns it, they shoehorn it in. So, so science needs to start doing debates. If we had a debate about the origin of the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, just read the book, um, Who Wrote the Dead Sea Scrolls? Uh, by Norman Gold, you will quickly realize this is a temple library. We have discovered the second temple library that when the Romans were coming, they were like, copy all these texts and bury them. And when Rome wrecks us, we'll at least have the library buried. So like this is four different groups of texts, like the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Essenes, and the Zealots, the, the fourth philosophy, are all their texts are buried in the Dead Sea. That's what those texts really are. They're not Essene text. Well, I mean, a couple of them are, but it's not. It's it's the Second Temple Library. That's a huge deal. That's that changes everything we thought we knew about the Second Temple. But nobody can embrace that because why? We don't have the, we don't have academic debates anymore. Uh, consensus opinion. It's like oh, this we had the consensus back then when we didn't know anything. Well, we do that with you know the universe, like cosmology. Like when we don't know anything, we make up these theories of the Big Bang theory, which is based on like three ideas a uh, cosmic background radiation expansion and whatever else light elements and when we know nothing we have a consensus opinion then 40 years later when everything else refutes that we're still saying oh no we gotta stick with the consensus so we need a great debate about urban planning we need a great debate about cinema 
We need a great debate in science.